Good afternoon, or wherever you are. My name is Jeremy Cammy. I am the events architect here at Indigo Books and Music. Thank you for joining us. It's June 15th. Wherever you are, we hope that you're safe. We hope that you're healthy. We are so excited that we're ending the day with this event. I'm truly, truly honored to be speaking with Melanie Watt. I have two kids of my own. She babysat them through us telling story times over the course of many, many years. So I hope that you are as excited as I am. As you can see, it's five o'clock and I am high. I'm high on life. Melanie will be joining us shortly to discuss the Scaredy Squirrel graphic novel and picture book. Got them here, read them both, love them, and love the fact that there's actually a graphic novel. So, so very excited. And this is what we need right now during this pandemic. We speak about anxiety, we speak about fear, and I'm a germaphobe, so trust me, I've been anxious and I've been fearful over the course of the past year. This event is being co-hosted by Indigo Books and Music, which is located in Canada, and an unlikely story in the United States. So hello to our Southern neighbors. We hope that you're safe and healthy. We cannot wait for the borders uh, to be open when they're safe to do so. And I will love to come visit. I actually have family living in Massachusetts. So hopefully we can visit soon. I encourage everyone watching to visit the pages of both stores, Indigo and An Unlikely Story, uh, which best fits you if you're American or if you're Canadian, wherever you're tuning in from, to order copies of both Scaredy Squirrel in a Nutshell and the graphic novel Scaredy Squirrel goes camping as well, the picture book. We're putting the links in those chat in the in the chat uh, right now as we speak through the magic of technology. No hands, but those links will appear. I am joining you from Toronto, Canada, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Melanie is joining us from outside Montreal, Quebec, on the unceded indigenous land of Kanehenkahaka, Mohawk Nation. And we recognize this as the custodians of the lands and waters on which you are calling, home, calling in from today. And now, on to the main event. So this is very exciting. I'm going to introduce Melanie, we're gonna have a short conversation. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of illustrations and then we wanna to get to your question. 
So leverage, use that chat functionality. Parents and kids, use the functionality, ask those questions, and we'll try and get to as many questions as we can. And we hope to wrap up by about 5.45 p.m. So, Scaredy Squirrel in a nutshell. You know him, you love him. Scaredy Squirrel is back with a brand new novel series. He's funnier and scarier than ever. And the time for this anxious little guy, wow, it is perfect right now. He's just happy to stay in his nut tree. Why would you ever want to leave? The outside world is filled with dangers. Does it sound familiar right now? Kids, does it sound familiar? It's getting better. It's like aliens and dust and certain fluff bunnies who pop up everywhere. Things don't always go as planned, even for a super prepared squirrel. When he has to venture out of his tree and onto the ground, scaredy panics, sometimes plays dead, but maybe fearful of that fluff bunny. Maybe that fluff bunny isn't so scary after all. Find out, you gotta pick up this book. Melanie Watt is also reissuing picture books of Scaredy Squirrel this fall, starting with Scary Squirrel Goes Camping, which I love also. If you're doing anything in the summer and you're staying around, you gotta read this book, because we're all probably gonna go camping rather than traveling. All right, let's do it. On to our main event, Melanie Watt. Melanie Watt is the best-selling creative genius behind many beloved picture books for children, including Scary Squirrel series, the Chester series, Bug in a Vacuum, you're finally here. Have I got a book for you? Augustine, the list goes on. Melanie has also won, if you go onto her pages, she has won so many awards. You'll see, you'll keep filtering over the years, so many awards, including Publishers Weekly, Kirkus Reviews, uh, Virginia Reader's Choice Award, North Carolina Children's Book Award, Maryland's Black Eyed Susan Award. She is even a multiple winner in Ontario, where I live, of the Library Association's Spruce Award and the Ruth and Sylvia Schwartz Children's Book Award. Obviously, she has just published these, this book, and we're here to talk to her today about this and many others. Ladies and gentlemen, folks, Melanie Watt, welcome to the stage. Hey, thank you. Wow. Like, That's an I'm awesome setting. introduction, Jeremy. I'm, thank I'm, you. <laughs> I'm speaking for so long, giving you this introduction. I have to tell you something. I have to tell you something. So my, my kids are now uh, 18 and 16. So, <laughs> so back in 2006, when you first published, so we're talking 15 years ago. Yep. I wasn't kidding when I said that you babysat my children. <laughs> Many story times, we had Scaredy Squirrel in hand. How does it make you feel to know that there's this whole generation that's grown up with this character and even Chester and possibly this new generation? Does it surprise you? It does, it, but it's like the greatest gift, I think. It makes me feel a little bit old, but, you know, <laughs> I try not to think about that part. Uh, no, I think it's uh, really the, the best thing ever to know that, you know, they still remember Scaredy, they remember me <laughs> after all this time, and that it had a positive influence uh, at one point in their childhood. So it's awesome. Talk to me a bit about the pandemic. And... I've interviewed many. I've, I've interviewed <laughs> many authors. I'm curious to know why now. What is it like releasing a book, reissuing a book during a pandemic? And do you miss going to the stores and meeting all of your fans, all the kids, and all the families? Well, I knew I wanted to make a scaredy book, but the I really actually started working on it before the pandemic, which is a little. Um, bizarre in a way because um, I was writing about social distancing you know when he has a tape a measuring tape to keep a distance from the the bunny and uh, the toilet paper all of that I had done before the pandemic so I was like this is kind of like a little spooky the way um, things are coming together but I figured you know it, it's an ideal timing for scaredy right now because we can relate to him even more but um, uh, I think um, everything used to be um, out of context before with Scaredy when with his Purell and everything 15 years ago. But today, everyone's living with that. So, you know, humor takes a different um, direction today because it actually happens. We actually all have Purell. We, ha we actually all have masks. 
unlike Scaredy, who was the only one doing that 15 years ago. But for sure, I, I miss uh, I miss going out there. I miss the bookstores. I miss uh, a lot of stuff like everyone else. It's a uh, it's a difficult time. It's we we all have to adapt and hopefully we're almost there. So talk to us a bit about and look, I, I'm I'm very honest. I, I'm anxious. Uh, I I am a germaphobe. I was fist bumping a long time before we were using Purell or, or, or shaking <laughs> Me too. hands. But Me too. yeah, what I can say is that working in a bookstore and obviously an unlikely story as well, there is something so beautiful, so natural about um, reading to children and discussing topics of the day or world issues. And we all know, Melanie, the world is messy. It's been messy for over a year now. When, when you pick up, when, when you have kids and parents pick up these books, what are you hoping that they learn from this? Obviously, we talk about anxiety. Obviously, we're talking about the pandemic. Do, do you hope that in some way, shape, or form that this book and the series of books help? Because Scaredy Squirrel is just that. He's scared. Like all of us, we're scared. I think everyone can relate to being scared and especially scared of the unknown. Like, it's what we don't know that's freaking us out. <laughs> out and that's why scaredy, I think, can relate to anyone of any age, uh, pretty much. So um, what I'm hoping is that it starts discussions between kids and their parents or teachers, because you kind of need a door, an entryway into the discussion that's not too, too heavy, too, too scary, like we need to understand like that there's some fears that make more sense than others. It just depends on the context really. And scaredy when he's afraid of sharks in a river, well, there you go. <laughs> there's a problem. Why, why is he afraid of uh, dust bunnies? So, you know, you kind of have to look at the context. And the other thing is that knowledge is power. The more you know something, the less you fear it. So that's what I'm hoping uh, the message that is going to come across with Scaredy as a character. So let's get inside the genius that is your mind. And um, <laughs> it's true. And Thank I, you. Like, you know, 2006, we've got, we've got a television series in 2011. And in fact, one of my friends was one of the uh, voiceovers for one of your characters, which is so, which is like six degrees of separation. Johnny Gould was one of the one of the voiceovers. So the whole thing is so strange. But let's get back. <laughs> to it. All right. So uh, let's talk about the illustrations. I'm always fascinated when you have both an author and an illustrator. What comes first? Does the story come first, or do the illustrations come first? And how do they come together? Well, the idea comes first. So, <laughs> and then uh, the way I work is. Um, uh, it's kind of a mix of both because whatever I can't say with an illustration, I'll say it in words and uh, it goes both ways. So uh, for me to build a story, um, I like to use both. And I'm a visual person, especially because I, I, stu I studied uh, graphic design. So sometimes it can be like, okay, I'm gonna put this crazy nutty map full of details. So I need the next page to breathe. I need space so I'm gonna build my book so that it it has a flow and I'm gonna use the visuals and the text to do to do that all right so let's let's get into uh the actual book scary squirrel in a nutshell meets next door neighbor who is a bunny uh or dust bunny so to speak it can be for all the kids who are listening it can be scary to meet new people it can be scary to be the only person in the courtyard so what are the tips for overcoming that fear? How do you meet new people without being afraid? Well, the, the thing in this book is that, oh, here he is, the dust bunny. Um, he starts out fearing a dust bunny, but as the story goes, it gets more precise as to who this bunny is. So it, it, it kind of goes back to my idea where, you know, knowledge is power. Not, the more you know about something, the less you fear it. So he has in his mind uh, this thing where this is a dust bunny, it's dangerous, I don't want anything to do with it. But as the book goes, he's going to learn more about this bun this dust bunny that's going to turn into a bunny. And I don't know if I can say anymore, but 
it's going to have a name. So when you, <laughs> so, and, and who knows, they might have a friendship there. So I, I think that's what, that's how I've constructed the book. It's kind of like a buildup of um, knowing more and more about your environment and fearing it less and less because you get more comfortable with what's out there. Let's talk a, a bit about um, the characters. The characters that you develop, are those characters that come to your mind? Have you ever had kids tell you, oh, you know what? The chipmunk would make a good character or a cow would make a good character. You must have gotten either fan mail, emails or, or requests live in person over the years. Curious to know, and you're laughing already, <laughs> yeah. I've touched a nerve. Curious to know the types of characters <laughs> either you've thought of or maybe the children have asked you to draw and to illustrate. Well, um... One of my the the one that came the the most often as a request was when is Chester and Scaredy going to be in the same book? <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, well I'm not sure that we can do that, <laughs> but uh, that's definitely uh, uh, one of the requests because I don't know they they like both characters and they wonder how they would interact and I think that's what's uh, fun about this graphic novel approach is that. Now Scaredy talks, he has speech bubbles, he communicates. Uh, we used to read him, a, a, it was a, a narration, so it was a different approach to the story, but now we really know what he's thinking, how he's gonna say it, what word, types of words he's gonna use. And that would actually be funny to see him have a discussion with Chester. And <laughs> but right. uh, That's good, a couple more questions and I definitely wanna see some illustrations. Uh, I, I grew up, on picture books. My children grew up on picture books, but then all of a sudden, we had comic books as well, but graphic novels really exploded over the past few years. So when, when I pick up this book, and for everybody out there, if you don't have it yet, this is, this, there's a lot of pages in here. So trust me, this is not an average uh, picture book. This is an actual graphic novel. Why the departure? Why did you decide graphic novel or even the fact of maybe now's the right time for a graphic novel was it because your fans asked you for it or the writing was longer and it made sense well it it, it was a lot of things coming together um, um publishers and discussions and and trying to find a fresh new way of um of putting scaredy out there and for me also it, it makes it makes it um, an adventure for me because I've never done a graphic novel. <laughs> I don't know how to do one. I, I was kind of stressed out going like, I'm not even, I don't know many comic books. I, it, it, it's not my thing, but I kind of like it because, uh, you know, there, I jumped into the unknown and figured it out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was kind of a mix of all of that. And hopefully uh, maybe the age group uh, is going to be a little bit uh, older. I, I and they'll be able to follow from picture book to graphic novel and enjoy Scaredy even longer. Is there a bit of Scaredy in you? And is there a bit of you and Scaredy? What's your biggest fear? <laughs> biggest fear? Well, it, I, I like to control things for sure. But that's a Chester thing too. So <laughs> controlling uh, everything is uh, my thing. And one of my biggest fears as a kid was, uh, well, I watched Jaws as a kid, which was a bad idea, I think. <laughs> so I was convinced there was a shark in our pool. So I must admit, I could hear that, the soundtrack when I was putting my head in the water. <laughs> Too much imagination. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. So uh, we're gonna get to drawing after this one final question from me. And that is your advice to all the kids watching right now who are either journaling, drawing, illustrating what's your advice to all the young writers and the young illustrators and artists well my advice would be to not be afraid to share your idea because um i can show you something that's here on my sure this this is actually the the first mock-up i ever made of scaredy squirrel i showed to the publisher and i know tara's on a, <laughs> right now on the zoom so she's probably going to remember but um, what I did is I, I put together, you know, the infamous page um, of ideas with the, the germs. And 
it's kind of a scary thing to put your ideas down on paper and to assemble this little mock-up with a with your scotch tape and and papers and scissors but I think it's the first step is to convince yourself and I think this is a good process so kids if you have ideas uh, or about stories or drawings that you really love you don't even need a story with it like you just you know uh, take care of what the, the the creations you do, like uh, put them in a, a special frame or, or make a little book. And and I think that's the first step of really, you know, um, cherishing what you do because an idea is an important thing. Totally agree. And you have many. All right. Let's get, <laughs> to, let's get to what you do best, both writing and illustrating. So over to you to show us the beauty of illustration. Okay. So... We're here in my office, as you can see, uh, uh, and I'm going to just unplug. I think you can still hear me. I can hear you. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to start drawing Scaredy Squirrel. So I, I start from the top down. So here is the top of his head. his ears and scaredy has i don't know if you can see uh, kind of a big head i'm not used to drawing this big so i usually draw on a tablet or a smaller piece of paper his nose is just a u and then you put a line and scaredy has a huge smile so here we go. And um, what gives some dimension to his smile is to add some, some shadow in the corners like the little rectangle. And then what's missing, the teeth of course. And they're not quite right. So what's missing again is like that line between the teeth and the eyes. And I always leave like a little white spot in the eye to kind of create a light. He is waving. And here is an acorn. Yeah. The only thing scaredy seems to want to eat. <laughs> It's amazing how it comes to shape, how we had no idea what you were drawing, and all of a sudden we've got a face, we've got hands, we have an acorn. I can see, maybe you can't see the, the feet properly, but... Oh. The feet we can't see yet, but maybe once you're finished with the feet, yeah. you can just lift up the paper and show us. There's the tail. Trying to see the feet now. Almost. Here's... I forgot this line here. It's got two colors. So, I don't know if you can see the feet now. <laughs> Getting better. <laughs> yep, there you go. Perfect. There. I'm, I'm curious to, this is fantastic. And I want this, this is, can we do one more? Sure. I would love for all the kids. So kids, you're at home right now with your parents. We'll give you 10 or 15 seconds. We'd love for you to get a piece of paper, ask your parents, paper and a pen or a marker. And we're actually going to try and follow or trace or draw with Melanie at the same time. So Melanie, can we do any character you want? We could do another character, but I would love for the kids to follow along and maybe see if, if they can somehow replicate or redesign what you're doing as best they possibly can. So kids, 
Do you have the markers? Do you have the paper? We'll give you 10 more seconds. And in the meantime, while we're counting down, part of the, uh, part of the newest book, we talk about pizza in the book. So Melanie, I have to ask, it's the biggest debate in the world. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Forget anchovies. I wanna know about pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, you heard it here. Pineapple, not on pizza. Okay, Melanie. All right, let's go for it. Kids, we're gonna draw with Melanie. Melanie, over to you again. Maybe okay. tell us, okay, go ahead. We can draw three things Scaredy is afraid of. I like Perfect. those many, but here are three. So let's start with something basic. A circle, three legs, two eyes. There you go. It's Gary the germ. <laughs> and what I do to make Gary look a little scarier, spookier, I add eyebrows. Very important for scaredy spears. You want to try another one? Looks like he's angry now. Is that what is that? That's exactly it. Yeah, scary angry. There you go. All right, next one. This one is going to be a B. So, are you guys following me? We're going to put two. Stripes and a stinger. And what's missing on my bee to turn it into a killer bee? Eyebrow. <laughs> Another angry. Look at that. That see the eye. I didn't. The eyebrows make all the difference. Yeah. <laughs> if Who kids learn something today about drawing, the importance of the expression and eyebrow. <laughs> And how about another one that's kind of annoying these days when we go camping? Circle, oval, wings again. And there you go, it's a mosquito. And now you guys must know what's missing on the mosquito, right? Eyebrows. <laughs> I see a trend here. <laughs> there sure is. <laughs> so I hope you guys are gonna practice and you'll 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 spot a lot of eyebrows in my books for sure. And all the scaredy <laughs> uh, backlist and and books, yeah. Good job, kids. Uh, scaredy squirrel goes camping, as we can see, the marshmallow on the front. I gotta ask you, Melanie, what's the proper way to roast a marshmallow? I'd like to know, is it golden brown or do you have to put it right into the fire? It's charcoal, the best way to eat a marshmallow. Um, it can't be burnt. You don't, you don't want fire on it, no. <laughs> no yeah, fire, you don't want to blow up the fire. Be patient for that kind of stuff. I get someone else to do it for me. <laughs> I agree, I agree with you. And since we're talking about My husband squirrel, does it for me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I said, like, can you please make me one? Since, we, um, uh, since we're talking about Scary Squirrel, Acorn and Nuts, I have to ask you uh, this also. Peanut butter, smooth or crunchy? Smooth. The only way to go. Yeah. <laughs> so now I, know, now I know if we ever meet, I can't, I can't bring over uh, a pizza with any pineapple on it, and you only eat smooth peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> but I love okay. chocolate, so s'mores would be a good idea. Oh, well, I, but I, this is uh, for all you kids out there. I love chocolate also. The question though is milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate? Uh, a mix of dark and, uh, and regular chocolate. <laughs> okay, no, good. So we're on we kind of mix page. it. That's yeah, that's great. I don't want to put you on the spot because I want to get to audience questions soon. But do you want to read a couple of pages from one of the books? It's up to you. Uh, I can. You want to do so, a story? This, I'm only saying this because for all the kids out there, how amazing is this that we actually have an author illustrator who reads her own book to us? Usually it's mom, <laughs> dad, caregiver, grandparent. But to think that the author is actually going to read to us, how cool is that? Do you <laughs> mind reading a couple of pages? No problem. All right. What's so, up? I'm going to take Scaredy Squirrel in a nutshell. 
Chapter one, safe and sound. Scaredy Squirrel watches over his nut tree with his binoculars. A few trespassers Scaredy Squirrel is afraid could drop by. Mammoth, of course, must uproot tree. Woodpeckers must poke holes in tree. Aliens must beam up tree. Lumberjacks must build cabin with tree. Cats must sharpen claws on tree. And termites must terminate tree. So these are all the scary things that could attack Scaredy's tree. So, so he's been going out on a limb to secure the area. Knock on wood. This page is blank for suspicious, uh, superstitious reasons. Must jinx tree. You see there, okay. number, number 13? 13. That's right. Nothing on number 13, so. Here he is, a cute little baby squirrel. Scaredy squirrel began protecting his nut tree at an early age. Warning, cute factor might be overwhelming for some. Wooden train sidetracks termites. So that's how you get rid of termites, so they don't go up your tree. A traffic cone fends off aliens, of course. And there's more. As Scaredy's nut tree grew, so did his safety measures. So he has a snowy tree decoy, a fake sign that says plaid sale in the city. I imagine that's for the lumberjacks. <laughs> Scratching post for the kittens or cats. Disco ball is for the woodpecker. Garden gnome, well, I'm not sure yet. We don't know. I think he's a safety guard. But pros of having all this stuff. Objects distract trespassers. Cons, objects attract dust. And dust gathers what? Dust bunnies! Oh no! According to Scaredy Squirrel, must spread dust around tree. Signals a bunch of dusty siblings with antenna. Digs burrows. Sneezes. Adorable pom-pom tail. 97% sure he's pals with Gary the germ. So luckily, Scaredy knows how to keep things clean with a scuba mask, dust repellent suit, pair of rubber gloves, and a vacuum. Do I continue? No, that's that <laughs> perfect. I just wanted everyone to see the, how beautiful the illustrations are as well as Thank the stories. And I was following along. So this is my favorite part. This is real, unrehearsed. These are actual questions from the audience. And I know that you'll engage with us and you want to answer the questions. So I'm going to try the best that I can, pronounce all the names right, and to try and get the names. So first question from Michelle. What is the bravest thing Scaredy has ever done? <laughs> uh, the bravest thing Scaredy has done. Like ever or in, in the graphic novel? I think we could just say, it doesn't make a difference, it just says, what is the bravest thing? So it could be ever in any of, of the books, or perhaps it's even in your mind, up to you. Um, hmm. It's a good one. It's like, I, because in one book, he let a dog lick his face, which was pretty brave. I don't know if I yeah. would do that. <laughs> let, let a dog lick my face. <laughs> You're right. It also depends upon the dog. But a dog licking face, that's a good answer. No, that's fine. Lisa asks, oh, this is a great one. So Lisa asks, what has Scaredy Squirrel been doing during the COVID pandemic? Um, I, I don't think it's changed very much for him. <laughs> I, I think he was uh, hanging out at home anyway. He had his ton of Purell. He had his masks and everything. And uh, watching the news and um I, I i think it was the same old for him like same old days 
<laughs> That's all good. It's fine. Henry asks, will Scaredy Squirrel ever go to space? Probably, if it happens, it'll probably be like a, a mistake or something. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if he would do it on purpose, but uh, it would be cool to see what he does in space. I agree. And how frightful <laughs> and scared he is of space. Uh, yeah. Leia asks, when did you first come up with the idea of Scaredy Squirrel uh, or even your other characters? And do you remember the moment or was there an actual squirrel that got you dreaming? Well, I, I remember, you know, it, it was 15 years ago. It was right where I'm sitting right now. It, it didn't look like this. We were renovating the house. It, it was like in pieces. <laughs> and I was at my computer and I typed for the first time the word scaredy squirrel on my computer. And I had this weird feeling about it. I was like, is this bizarre? Or is this like, like, you know what that when that first idea comes out and you're kind of scared because you're not sure like if it makes any sense or not, but you know there's something about it that's gonna work out. But that I remember that feeling super well. And yeah, I've been watching squirrels <laughs> forever and, and thinking they're a perfect uh, neurotic um animal and I thought they would make a perfect um, uh, character for a book about fear and what was uh, really great about Scaredy is that um, he could be like a, a flying squirrel um, so you had the idea of a squirrel the tree the nuts it was a nice metaphor about you know having every element you need um, but at the same time I wanted that animal to have something about him that was special but he never knew because he never leaped out of his tree or took any risks great mira asks what's and this is this could be something because i know that these, this was just released but what's next for scaredy squirrel if you could hint on an adventure that may be coming up well, he's going to make more friends. <laughs> so he's going to be talking to different per different uh, new friends with different personalities. Uh, some that are almost the opposite of him. So that makes for interesting uh, <laughs> discussions where uh, maybe he'll meet someone that is not afraid of anything. And uh, they're going to try to work on a project together or get something done which is going to be a lot of fun. And it's been a lot of fun for me to work on, on that book. It's actually just finished. So <laughs> I'm really excited about it. And hopefully in-person events. All right. Amaya and her son ask, will we ever see a Chester graphic novel? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> you never know. You're, you're very good at keeping secrets, I have to say. I feel like I can tell you anything because you're not going to spill the beans. <laughs> well, right now, there's nothing concrete on the subject, but I, I know there are Chester fans out there. They're, they're telling me, they're asking, and, and I keep saying right now in the third book, the way it ended was that he had no more marker. So when he comes back, it's going to be big. It's, it's going to be... It's got to be big because it's Chester and he's been waiting a while. <laughs> so okay. that would be fun for sure. Yes, it would be. We can't wait. Emily asks, was there a teacher that encouraged you when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Lots of teachers encouraged me, um, especially uh, art teachers, because I like to draw, but I, I never thought it would could be a career or, or something to do as I got older, but um, my art teachers really encouraged me and, and, and told me that, you know, I had something and, and I should continue practicing and developing my, my, my talent. And it's because of a teacher at university that I wrote my first book, Leon the Chameleon. Without her, I would not be writing kids' books today because it wasn't even part of my idea of uh, possibilities. So I owe it to her. Michelle Lemieux. 
We all remember one of our teachers, right? Marissa uh, asks, and I know this is difficult to answer because the books are like your children, but what has been your, what has been your favorite scariest squirrel book to write and to illustrate? I, I think it's scary squirrel in a nutshell. So. <laughs> and the reason because it's, because it's different. It's new. It's uh, I don't know. It, 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 I, I, one of my favorites from the picture books is uh, also Scaredy Makes a Friend, but in the, um, uh, the graphic novel, uh, I don't know, I got to discover another side of, of me um, in terms of, of storytelling, me doing jokes and, and art, because I feel like I, I'm, I'm drawing differently. It's, it, it's been like I've been doing kids books for 20 years and art evolves. So, you know, I'm really happy with it. Good. Sarah asks, I love the art loving Augustine. Could there be, another yes. So will there be another book? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, it wasn't, it wasn't planned that, no, I, I, I think I saw it as a one, a one-off book, Augustine. Um, actually, it's inspired by my my uh, childhood. So, uh. Sarah also asked, and this might be a different Sarah, so I'm not sure, but we know that you are bilingual, so you speak both French and English. Yes. When you are writing down your ideas and thinking about the process, are you thinking in English or are you thinking in French? Uh, I'm thinking in both. It's um, it, it's funny because I can some of the sentences I write can be translated word to word in French in a, and it's kind of my style now because it's, it's how I, I think. And I, I want the jokes to work in both languages. Like when you use wordplay for certain jokes, like they don't always work in French. Like I can't say like, for example, nutty. <laughs> nutty doesn't really exist in French, <laughs> that word. Um, so I'm always thinking of, okay, then what am I going to do How, to um, make it funny, but in another, in, in French. So yeah, it's kind of like a whole mix up of things. <laughs> uh, I think it's, I think it's also great to note that obviously the book's available uh, in French. And I hope that the link has been dropped into the, into the uh, chat functionality. So for any of you out there, the book is definitely available uh, in French. We're going to take a couple of more questions. Uh, Elena asks, what is Scary's favorite food? Um, nuts. <laughs> Acorns, nuts. I think that's the favorite. And it's that's part of, it is, right? it's that's part it. of like the problem in this book. I can show you one of the pages where this becomes an issue. Um, yes. this, this part right here. So what happens when nuts is your favorite food and the only thing you eat and they just suddenly fall out? You got to find the nuts. You got <laughs> to get them. You got to do something about it. So that's um, <laughs> that's what I would say. And I, I just wanted to mention that in French, uh, Scaredy Squirrel is Frisson l'écureuil en bref. That's the, the title of uh, Scaredy Squirrel in a nutshell. Wonderful. This was so great. Uh, I want to leave you with the last word. So, Melanie, A, thank you so much for uh, your time. Thank you for this wonderful gift, which is this graphic novel, along with all of your other books. You have added so much joy to so many families across <laughs> the globe. It is true. It is 100% true. Uh, what, what is your message to all the kids out there as we hopefully see the light at the end of the tunnel? What's your message for all the kids for the summer and I guess for the fall? Well, I, I would continue to be uh, cautious, but you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be encouraging because I, I would keep the Purell nearby <laughs> personally, <laughs> just in case, why not? I've had it for 15 years. Like what's, why, why not? Uh, but I, I think, um, you know, you have to stay hopeful that things are, might not come back. Well, they might not come back exactly like they were, 
but you know, I'm, I'm sure there, there has to be like some positive, um, out of this, this situation that, that comes out, like that sometimes, you know, um, things happen and they, they help us discover something about ourselves, kind of like, like scaredy discovers something every time he steps out of his comfort zone. So I, 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 I'm hoping that this is what uh, scaredy can help kids, um, realize uh about um this situation that's going on and it's not easy but you know we have to stay hopeful well that are great words i want to thank you i want to thank our partners in the states an unlikely story we want everyone out there to read 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 school yeah. may be done in a few weeks keep reading melanie let's make a promise that when this is all over we can have you in store for a story time and a book signing. Do you agree? Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Yay. Everybody out there, of course. stay safe, stay healthy. Have a great summer. Melanie, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank Jim. you for everyone who worked back. The publisher, Penguin Random House. All the best, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you very much.